For me, hand sketching started by accident. For years, I had been drafting by hand on a drawing board with a parallel bar and triangles. Then CAD came along and I gave away my drawing table. It took me forgetting about a client meeting to understand the power of freehand sketching. We had talked before, but that day I was supposed to deliver my ideas for the floor plan of their new home. I had an idea of what they wanted, or so I thought. 45 minutes before our meeting, I had nothing. So I pulled out a couple of floor plans that we had already drawn for reference. I dusted off a roll of bum wad and started laying out walls with a sharpie. When the clients arrived, I was still sketching. I showed them what I'd come up with and explained how I was exploring more ideas. They reviewed my work, looked at each other, shook their heads and said, what I had drawn was nothing like what they wanted, but they were confident that I would get there. Then they asked what ideas I wanted to explore. I added another layer of tracing paper and together we dove in and designed the home that they wanted. I realized that I had stumbled upon something, but didn't know how to describe it. Now I finally found how to express how important the hand sketch is to the architectural process. I signed up for a master class and sat in on some sessions by Frank Geary. One is titled, Begin the Process on Paper. And in that master class, here's how Geary explains it. I was designing a entrance piece for a house I was doing for in, in Ohio for a, a wealthy guy, for a good friend. And when the fine when you see the final thing, you think it's a skull of a of a animal like a horse. And so we call it the horse's head. But when I was designing for this guy's house, and I didn't know it was a horse's head, and I didn't know it was going to look like that, I sort of was trusting my intuition to create something that was an ephemeral image in my mind that I couldn't quantify or, or, or draw. I could sketch and do things with it. But in this case, I tried to design it on the computer because I, I realized if we could do that, that would save a lot of time and effort and so on. So I sat in front of the computer with a, a computer guy who knew how to manip push the buttons because I didn't know how to do that. We clocked it. Somebody clocked it. I, it was 3.4 minutes when I got up and ran out screaming and couldn't stand it anymore because the disconnect between the dream image and the act and the images on the computer, which are dried out and lifeless and inhumane and what else, you know, they're just geometry and drawings and they don't have the human touch. If you circumvent all that stuff and just go computer to construction, you eliminate the human touch. The human touch. It's that simple. And yes, I believe AI and BIM are enormously important tools to architecture. And who knows what exciting things are on the horizon as far as technology is concerned. But I've never had a client ask me to autograph a CAD drawing. The human touch. If you want your work to have that human touch, here are a few tips on how to get started. First, as Steve Jobs, the creator of the reality distortion field, among other things, said, don't be afraid. You can do this. Second, use a piece of grid paper. Put it under your tracing paper. It helps keep the sketch somewhat square and at some level of a scale. Next, whatever scale that is, make it small. The smaller the drawing, the faster you can sketch. The faster you can sketch, the more time you have for bigger ideas. Don't be afraid to waste sketch paper. Use multiple layers and explore as many options as you can imagine. When you come to a solution, tie all the ideas together with one last layer. And finally, another mentor of mine, Mike Lynn, taught me how to tell the critics, and there will be critics, hey, I'm a designer, I'm not finished yet. And speaking of Mike, we have one of his introductory sketching classes available in our teachable library. Go to aibd-online.teachable.com slash courses. I know, it's a long URL. We'll put the link in the notes below. I'll warn you though, Mike has a unique way of teaching. It's fun, but he uses some colorful language. If that doesn't bother you, look for his one-hour session drawing quickly and effectively and discover how the human touch can work for you. You can thank me in the comments below. And I thank you for watching this entire video. Have a triumphant week.